Hi YouTube, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're gonna to be painting a funky vase of flowers. Later after the video, I decided to paint in my vase turquoise, but you can do what you want. And today we're going to be speaking a little bit about how to use the supplies that you have now and stop saving them. We always like to save things for a rainy day, save them for when we want to do something big and beautiful, save the expensive ones or the rare ones or the gifted ones. Just start using your supplies now if it makes you happy because honestly, waiting is not gonna make it a better experience later on. Let's get into the video. Okay friends, so we're doing something a little different today and you can see my Marigold reference photo on the left there. Now, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. Again, like I usually do, I use my reference photos just loosely to give me an idea of composition. And I just, you know, I go with it and I have fun with it. So this is how I do a marigold. I like to do a nice spiky loose center, leaving a lot of white space. And then I'm gonna do these little sketchy marks. What I like to do is dip my paintbrush in water to take off some of that saturated paint after I've added in the center. And now I've got some lighter marks around that center as we're going outward, just scrubbing and scribbling using that brush quite loosely. I'm holding it very loosely. And then I will continue to dip my paintbrush into water and do lighter and lighter layers as I'm leaving the white space and scrubbing on my paper. And that's gonna give just some dimension to that flower the center might be darker, it might have more shadow, maybe there's more looseness on the outside. And that's why I like to do a marigold, just not too structured. And I don't like to put the sketching first down because then it kind of takes away from just the naturalness of this flower. So we're doing this again in that darker orange color, started off really dark, and then you dip your brush, wipe it off on the side, and then start to do these lovely sketchy marks. Now, leaving a lot of white space is key, and I'm working my way outward, of course, little by little, just kind of going for that round shape, but I also don't want it to be super, super round, so it's okay if some of these petals look kind of spiky or pokey. Now, as I'm doing that, and I'm gonna do a third flower here in a moment, I wanna talk to you about using your good supplies. So, so often, we just save what we have because we're afraid to waste. We're afraid and we just don't know if we deserve to use those really good supplies. So the first thing I want you to remember is just start. There will never be a day where you think, oh my goodness, those expensive supplies that someone bought me or I purchased and am saving for one day. You know, now I feel like I've arrived and I deserve to use those supplies. That day may never come, just start. I have a mixture of different paints on my palette. I love my palette, but I started off with some very nice student grade paints. They're wonderful, they work really well, but I was just afraid to start mixing other types of paints in with it. So when my palette was starting to go low with the student grade paints, I wanted to add in some professional paints from a tube, and it was really hard to do. Side note, I'm just adding in some centers here to give us a starting point for the really loose, smaller marigolds we're gonna put in next. So circles leave a little white space, and then we're gonna take some, you could take some, another color, or you can take yellow and do some little dots around that just to create a really fun little center. After that, we are going to experiment with different colors some oranges, some yellows, maybe even some red to create these really simple flowers. So I'm using the belly of the brush here, pressing down, creating these really nice loose petals. So you can see that there's not a lot of thought put into it. I'm changing the angle of my brush as I continue to do this. And I'm using the brush, the, the, the shape of that brush to create those petal marks here. So in some of these, we'll have just a tiny little petal at the bottom because it's maybe tilted a little bit and others might have all the petals that are just the same length and the same size. So I decided to put that professional paint in with the student grade, but it was so hard to do. I almost couldn't do it because I was like, I don't want to waste that and I don't want to mix them together because I should keep the professional separate 
from the student. Who cares? I had to remind myself, just do it, just enjoy. The colors that I put in there, I really loved and they were from a specific brand. And so I mixed them and I don't regret it now, but it took me a while. Just use those supplies, jump in and see how you feel about it. So now I am using a beautiful light pinky coral color and I'm sketching in this vase. It has a, a little base here that I'm adding in. And then, you know, I'm just kind of going with the flow as I'm adding in different uh, elements to it. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to make it solid or if I wanted to keep it kind of like this clear, transparent vase or maybe one that's a little tinted. So sometimes it's a surprise what we come up with and that's just the beauty of doing art. So now I've got some clean water on my brush and I'm just spreading out some of that paint, just allowing it to spread just a tiny bit to soften up the edges and allow that paint to kind of move around a little bit with the water. All right, so at this point, we're gonna put in our stems and connect everything together. Like I said, it's a wonky vase of florals. I'm loving this, this is really fun. A little different this time. So I want you guys to hold your brush very loosely and also in your head, remind yourself this is practice. This is supposed to be fun and you are doing this for you and only you. So let's just go with the flow. Uh, the second thing I want to remind you guys of is that these supplies can be replaced. Now I understand budgets and sometimes we just aren't able to afford the fancy things, but you know watercolor supplies do last forever. And if you've got them on hand already, why not try them out and see how they feel? And sometimes you feel a little extra fancy and a little extra creative. So these can be replaced they are things that you already have in your possession and why not? The third thing guys I want to remind you of is that you deserve to use nice supplies. You really do. And I think this is something that not everyone will relate to, but some people really will understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes there's this idea that we don't feel like we have enough value that we should be using something, especially if we are just starting out in our watercolor journey. It can feel like we need to wait until we're better. Uh, we need to wait until we're at a level where we feel comfortable. But I would argue that, you know, it's a good time to just start now and, and see how that goes for you and give yourself something fancy to work with at times. You don't have to use them all the time, but don't let the fear of wasting those supplies cripple you from experiencing the joy that comes from the beautiful things that you have found, you have been gifted, you have saved. So right now I'm taking the clean damp brush and I'm just rubbing over where I've painted just to sort of soften up the green stems because they are pretty stark. They're just, they're standing out right there. Guys, if you're liking this video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel. Remember I'm on Patreon, $3 a month and up for exclusive tutorials, drawing sheets, and more tutorials. So it's really a lot of fun over there. Check it out in the description in the description of this video. And I wonder, you know, where might you have some of these supplies hidden away? I'm just going through here and I'm going to, as you're pondering the question, of course, I'm gonna add in just some fun sketchy marks, some really nice saturated color to make the bloom stand out. And I'm also trying to be very asymmetrical. So I'm gonna darken up, at least for this red one, just on one side, leaning more towards that versus darkening up every side because I feel like this gives it a little bit more interest. Just one part maybe has more shadow just depending on where the light is falling, but we're not worrying too much about the specifics of where the light is coming from. We're just trying to create some depth in this floral and of course in these tiny ones as well. So adding in a little bit more saturated paint on all those petals loosely and lightly as well. So I know everybody has a space where they keep those supplies tucked away in a drawer or somewhere else, guys. Don't be afraid, break out the supplies and let me know how it feels. Alrighty, friends, I hope you enjoyed painting this with me today and I hope that you remember ways to just let go and utilize your supplies now, knowing that you deserve it, you are valuable, and even if you don't feel like you're a good enough artist, you can still use the supplies and it's gonna be okay. 
I want to remind you guys that I am on Skillshare and link below you can see the referral link to my courses. I have three on there so far. Another one is coming in June. I'm really excited about it. My trip to Italy has two spots left. So if you are a lucky person feeling lucky today, go ahead and check that out linked in the description as well. And finally, you can find me on Patreon for as low as $3 a month for exclusive tutorials, drawing sheets, and so much more. Thanks for being here guys. And I'll see you soon on the next tutorial. Happy painting, happy mental health.